Fakia. Back in the fucking gym, I. Grab me stubby cola. We'll hit a bit of bench press and fucking um, maybe read the Bible. You know what I mean? Does it get any better than that? <clears throat> oh, uh, I thought, yeah, might as well fucking crack me Bible out when I, if I do an afternoon live. Um, quick fucking beer. Where the fuck is everyone tonight? Who cares? People will join. We'll fucking quickly pray. <clears throat> Get on your one knee. That's always good. Get on one knee, go like that. Heavenly Father. I don't, you don't even need to close your eyes. God, help us do some good bench press. And we'll read the Bible together and have a good fuck to see what we can find any good stuff in there. Bless everyone who listens in Jesus' name. Amen. How good's that? <laughs> I haven't even warmed up. I probably should have done that. Why? That's the way you fucking do it. Should be right. We'll slam one out. And then we'll have a read. See how we go. It's only 70 kilos. We'll see what I got. Should be stronger than last time. Should be. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah. Dang. My arm goes a bit like crunch crunch this one here that elbow doesn't really like it eh? anyway how's scomo's form saying he might um mandate the vaccines um you'll be having to get your coronavirus vaccine eh? i'm telling you that is just not going to happen oh i've got me buddy me mate's photo in the bible from when he was in jail. God bless him. True love, mate. Um, I was thinking, yeah, I don't think the um, vaccine's going to get, um, people aren't going to take the vaccine. People are going to be like, nah, mate. Fair enough if you're, like, fully sick. If you're like, oh, I'm on the fucking way out. Or you're, like, 60. But I don't think young people are going to be keen to get the vaccine, to be honest. Not really keen on it. Um, I was thinking we read Timothy, this book. It's like the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy. Tim Paul started some church and um, in Macedonia or some shit, and then he's like wrote this letter, fucking, you know, licked it, put it in the fucking postal, posty bike, He's cruised off and fucking delivered it. So this letter, Paul, the apostle of Christ, <clears throat> by the command of God our Saviour and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true son in the faith. Isn't that nice that they would, like, call you a son? That does give us, like, a um, historical uh, reason that, like, you could be, like, I don't know, if you're a pastor and you're mentoring someone, you could be like, my son, my spiritual son, isn't that nice? I often call men Christian guys older than me who are like my leaders. I'll be like, they're my spirit dad. If you're the proud boys, I call my spirit dad. My Queensland president, he's a legend. Tough as nails. Good man. Tell, he'll tell me to pull my head in if I'm an idiot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is a letter. See how he's posted the letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul. People are like, you know, this is no, this is definitely historical um, evidence that in the real Jesus and in the 
the culture he pioneered. You know what I mean? Because these dudes are like around with Jesus. They were chilling. Uh, Paul wasn't. Paul wasn't even a Christian at the time. He was a he was a Jewish fucking what do they call him? Uh, um, Pharisee or something like that. He was like a hard out. Orthodox kind of Jew, probably beyond. If you like, considered like, I guess the Pharisees would be like considered like ISIS, like extremists to the fucking core. I don't know. Maybe go, you could go that far. Anyway, <clears throat> whenever you read the your Bible and it has like a heading on it, that's not that's like added. That's actually been added to the um to the Bible. That's not. Technically, they've added like a little title to each chapter. That's not, that's not, um, that's been added to the Bible, just so you know. It says, Timothy charged to oppose false teachers. That's what the title is. That's been added to the actual letter. Um, this is what Paul said to Timothy. As I urge you when I was, when I went to Macedonia, <clears throat> stay there in Ephesus. I don't know if I'm saying that right so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrine any longer or to be <clears throat> devoted. Hang on, I fucked this up. The writing's so small. <clears throat> um, so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrine any longer or to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. Some people say that this um, this is like, they might have been talking about um, the Book of Enoch or they might have been talking talking about here at the time. There might have been like, you know how there's like conspiracy theories or there's theoretical doctrine and people like talking about fallen angels and stuff. <clears throat> so he's just like, he's like, these people are obsessed about these um, theoretical doctrines and are going on about um, myths and endless genealogies. So people say... I've heard a few Bible studies where they're like, you know, they'll be like, oh, this is talking about um, the flood after the, uh, during the, before the flood, when the fallen angels mated with man. I don't really like, whatever. I think that's a cool story. I like that idea. So poss that's a possible, that's possibly what they're talking about but we could also read it in modern context and be like yeah some people um they go on about um they devote themselves to like never-ending fucking um conspiracy theories and weird ideas that just lead them down to the lead them down the fucking rabbit hole yo hey mate hi how you going i'll have to hit another bit of bench press though Um, I guess we love creating rabbit holes and awesome conspiracy theories. It's funny that two years, 2,000 years ago, they were like, <clears throat> they were dealing with people who get locked in some strange ideas and never fucking go, never uh, stop raging about it. We've all been there, I guess. I don't know. Um, such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work which is by faith. <clears throat> the goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscious and sincere faith. I kind of think, like, if we were to talk about people who get bogged down in conspiracy theories or people who get really worried, right, like, oh, the coronavirus, it's all going to end, oh, the fucking vaccine, oh, the, you know, all this terrible shit. Well, he's saying, like, how, what we should be doing if there's, like, big conspiracy theories flying around. The Bible says, um, he says, such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. Because, like, so if we're operating in God's work, if we're, like, outworking the faith, we're being faithful, we're being kind of optimistic of the future, you know what I mean? Like everyone who gets bogged down in the conspiracy theory, I feel as though they're like, they feel helpless. They feel like there's no fucking, there's no optimistic um, future for them. They get bogged down on it. 
So I can take, I'm just taking my little um, little bits that I'm getting from the scripture. So I'm reading it in relevance to me or to whatever's going around, you know, whatever I'm feeling. This, there could be many ways to interpret this, <clears throat> but you're getting, you're getting my interpretation. Um, can you hear the wind? Let us know. Footage is, is glitchy at the end, but sounds perfect. Oh, yeah, there's a bit of a, like, storm. I can I have a bit of a um, fully, fully fucking windy in that at the minute. Belly copped. Ah, oh, sick brass. I should fucking, where was I up to? I was up to verse um, six. I'll punch out another another set of bench press. I'll be back to that. And then we'll keep going. Oh, shit. Oh, moving you forward. Don't have shit together today. Any day. Any day, let's be honest. I feel like my bench is a little bit out. Any fucking why? I've messaged, um, do you guys know Robert Frank? That, like, mad-ass dude who works out and goes, he goes, like, mental. The dude who did the Pokemon Go Fuck Yourself video, I sent him a message. I was like, you should come on my live. We should do a live together. I don't know, I feel he's probably too, like, famous to want to talk shit with me. But anyway, I did send him a message. Um, anyway, verse 6. Um, I'll go back to verse 7. The goal, yeah, verse 4, I'll go back to. Uh, anyway. I've sent you to Ephesus so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer or to devote themselves to myths and endless gene genealogies. Such things promote controversial speculation then, rather than advancing God's work, um, which is by faith. Uh, the goal <clears throat> of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good, conscious and sincere faith. Damn. That sounds good. That sounds like such a nice way to have like a outlook or mentality, doesn't it? A pure heart, a good conscience and a sincere faith. I guess everyone would like admire to have that, right? Sounds really great. Um, some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk. I guess I do that every time I do a live. <laughs> they want to be teachers of the law but they do not know what they are talking about or what they or what they so confidently affirm. Yeah, I guess you, you um, how often do you get sick of people constantly? I get sick to death of people like trying to micromanage and tell you how to fucking do everything. <laughs> it would totally be, it's like, how annoying is it? You just want to be like, dude, I guess if you're, like, living in the spirit, you don't have to constantly, like, throw a rock at every barking dog and try to control everything. You're like, yo, you got your confidence and you got your peace and you don't um, carry on like a pork chop like these dudes are talking about. Verse 8, we know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law, the law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, <clears throat> for those who kill their fathers and mothers for 
or murderers. I don't know, for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality. Holy shit. That's like, for, I don't know, 2% of the population of the earth. I guess we're all fucking pretty immoral. <clears throat> uh, for slave traders. There you go. So it says it's not good to be a slave trader. There you go. They all say, like, I've heard people be like, your Bible justifies slavery. And they say that. <clears throat> Get it, Dusty? <gasps> hey, brother. Um, yeah, so I've heard them say, you know, oh, your fucking Bible justifies slavery. Well, there you go. It's, it's calling a slave trader a sinner. They're saying it's a sin. This is New Testament, but so this would have been written like 50, between 50 and 100 years after Christ. The Apostle Paul was obviously alive to write it, and he was around the same time as Jesus. So um, there you go. New, new, the Christian culture, bang, it was a sin to be a slave trader. It's also a sin, and if they're like, and you can't throw the bat. You can't. Uh, you got to take the whole message, don't you? Because it's saying that homosexuality is a sin, and fucking people won't like that these days, will they? Uh, for the sexually immoral, I guess fucking all of us are pretty sexually immoral these days. Uh, most people. Um, anyway, I'm drifting off. Uh, where was it? For the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and prejurers, <clears throat> prejudges. That's like pre being prejudiced. Isn't that like the whole thing these days with the people like racism? Or they like, you know, aren't we all against being prejudiced? It's saying it's a sin to be prejudiced. To have a preconceived judge someone, uh, make like a preconceived judgment on someone unfairly. I guess pre being prejudiced is like unfairly prejudging someone, not giving them a fair go. <clears throat> um, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine. So that's the sound, that is sound doctrine he's saying. If people like drift away from these kind of list everything there that we we do as individual people wrong and we stuff out up and you always got to imagine if like if this is like the common list of things it's probably that it it's quite common it was common back then uh all these things and a part of probably human nature to do this this stuff you know what i mean so we're all like fuck god help me um where am I? <clears throat> um, and, well, and and whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine. That's why we can't, like, at the moment, our society's, like, trying to justify uh, what is right and wrong. They're trying to change it. But this is saying, um, you know, don't listen to people that say contrary to the sound doctrine. Don't listen to them, people. Um, that was... That's uh, First Timothy 10, uh, 1 Timothy 1.10, if you ever want to look it up and be like, fuck, ah, I'm being an idiot. This is what the Christian culture says, the Christian tradition. Um, so if you're a Christian and you're like, sorry, bucko, I don't want to participate in your gay stuff or your, uh, you know, the list, the list of things there your sexual morality or you're like, dude, you're being prejudiced, you're fucking judging these um, good <clears throat> conservative dude and you're calling him a Nazi, I'd be like, you're being prejudiced. Put it on him and be like, brother, that's against good sound doctrine, I don't know. Put it on him. Put it on him because we're a multicultural country and you can just be like, uh <clears throat> You can just put it back on him and be like, dude, I'm standing by the sound doctrine. I'm standing by this, my culture and my tradition. Someone, um, what do you see, you reckon? Um, some very laggy video, but audio clear. Is it? Sorry, guys. What have I? Let me have a look. I've uh, got me things on. 
anyway, thanks for putting up for it, uh, putting up with me. Uh, Bor Nordic, <clears throat> know your Bible and you can't be deceived. Amen. It seems like, you know, when they announce that they're going to mandate a vaccine, uh, today ScoMo's are like, it's going to be mandatory. You just go like, we're living in a crazy time where the government seems to think that they've got this unlimited power. They're like taking, I'm pretty sure they've removed cash from ATMs at the moment now. There's no There's no cash down the ATMs. Can't get any cash. We're going cashless. They're pretty much just going to say they're going to mandate vaccines. What the fuck's going on, people? I think we need to be hitting the gym and reading the Bible a bit more, don't you think? Just in case. <laughs> and I'm not spouting no conspiracy theory. I don't know what the fuck's going on. All I'm saying is I'm going to, we just keep doing what we always do. Do some weights and read the Bible. We'll be right. We'll get through. We've got faith. Just like he said up there, we don't get carried away in conspiracy theories. But we live um, by faith. We, we're optimistic. We, we remain optimistic. The believers remain optimistic. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what was that? The end of verse 10. And for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine that confirms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which, it, <clears throat> which he entrusted to me. So he was like going on, the Apostle Paul's talking to Timothy at the start of the um, Timothy 1. He was saying how people in his in the church were like banging on about false doctrines and they were talking about, um, they were getting freaking obsessed about myths and endless genealogies. And, um, you know, obviously he's like, yo, just make sure that everyone's got their like, we clearly know what is right and wrong. So he's like, these people are getting carrying on about conspiracy theories. They're carrying on about myths and genealogies. <clears throat> and isn't a genealogy like your descendants, your race? So when people now, people are going on about Black Lives Matter, they think all the white people are racist. Some people think all the Jews are racist. I'm pretty sure they're banging on about genealogies. Pretty sure they're banging on about race. They become obsessed, but like the Bible says, it's a myth. These are myths they're talking about. They're made up beliefs. Uh, they're made up lies. <clears throat> and then the Apostle Paul in verse eight. That's where he bangs out the list of what is right and wrong. We clearly know what is right and wrong. We know this. Don't drift away. Don't be fooled. Stick to what is right. Stick to what the Word says. Stick to the culture. Stick to the tradition. He's talking about what we know to be consistently true. He just lays it out. <clears throat> he laid it out. I'll read again what he said was um, sins. We know that the law um, is good for the ones that use it properly, and we have to use it properly. We don't use the law to, like, stand over people and look down on them, that they're like, that we're better than them or they're fucking sinners and all this stuff we don't use the law for that we use the law to help us protect ourselves so that we don't so we take advice from and we go yo we're going to listen to the culture and the tradition we're going to listen to the um to the to to christ we're going to listen to the apostles and we're going to be like yo this is this this is the culture this is the tradition. This is what we do. This is the standard. We know what is right and wrong. We're not going to use it to look down at people, but we'll use it as a tool to protect ourselves from um, heartache and pain and drama and uh, all the things that come along with it. You know what I mean? It protects us. The law the law protects us. These, these common laws protect us. This is what he's saying. We know that the law is good. If it's used property properly, we also know that the law is not made <laughs> for the righteous, but for the lawbreaker and rebels, <clears throat> the on the ungodly, the sinner, the unholy, and the irreligious. <clears throat> for those who kill their fathers and mo mothers, for murderers, for those 
for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders. There you go. And they always say, has your Bible justified slavery? Bullshit. New Testament right there. First Timothy 10 just says that fucking slave traders are sinners. That's a sin. It also says homosexuality is a sin. It says murder is a sin. Sexual morality is a sin. Uh, being prejudiced is a sin. <clears throat> for whoever else, it, for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, that confirms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God. <clears throat> Sorry, verse 11. That conforms to the gospel concerning concerning the glory of the blessed God which he entrusted to me. It seems like if that's the simple stuff, he's like, bang, you know what's right and wrong. You know what's right and wrong. This is some simple truths that you can know what's right and wrong. It seems pretty simple. There's not a that's not a, a huge list. My telegram has more rules than that. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll do another set and then we'll drop him down to the next to verse 12. They've given it a new heading. See how they've put it, they've banged another heading on there. The next one says um, 1, Timothy, 1 Timothy 12, the Lord's grace to Paul. So they've added that. They've added that heading. They've added that to the Bible. But I think we're reading, this might even be an NIV. So heaps of people be like, no. This is a new international version. It's nice and easy for me. <clears throat> nice and easy for me to read. King James. I know. I should be reading the King James, but this bogan stumbles around on freaking easy, uh, the easy ver version, you know. Anyway, third set. It's all good. Maybe that was nine. I got to eight and I was like, I'll do one extra. Maybe I maybe I didn't do it. Didn't do eight. Would have might have been a bit slack on that one. Anyway, verse <clears throat> First Corinthians one twelve. Let's see what else he has to say. I just randomly thought, let's read this <clears throat> and uh. See how much good good advice is in the Bible, how it's like just keeps you gives you some good advice, gives you sets your culture, reminds you to be like in tune to the culture and the tradition of our ancestors. And this is good for everyone. Remember the New Testament is for every nation, so every one of us can be blessed by this, and then we get tuned into the Christian culture to the Christian race, you know what I mean? <clears throat> if it doesn't matter, um, at least you're reading the Bible, Dusty. The reason King James Version is special is because it is the accepted legal um, version to use in court. Oh, yeah, cool. <clears throat> um, you do have to be aware of a few words an alteration, some um, passages missing, but the message is still there. Yeah, totally. I agree. I like my my King James has like my King James has like a um, reference thing down the middle, like a bar, and there's all these references. So that's like that is why I like to use my King James because it's got way more references. So like I could <clears throat> say, for example, where it said they were talking about. Um, First Timothy, I don't know, 4 or something where it says they're talking about endless genealogies. If I had my new King James in the column, it would have 
had a reference and it would have told me the exact verse or it would have taken me to the Old Testament and would have been like, yeah, this is, this is most likely what they were talking about. So that, like, makes it handy because it gives it, you know, when you're seeing, you've probably seen Jordan Peterson and you'd be like, the Bible is the first hyperlinked book and he has, like, a chart and it's all, like, lines referencing back to each other. <clears throat> and that's pretty much what them references are all about. I don't think I have. Yeah, nah. There's a few references on the bottom of this Bible, but not many. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Thus, sneaky got rid of the references of alterations. That's right. They cut it out. Too lazy. It's probably because it was like it's probably a fairly cheaper Bible. Um, you know what I mean? I think you know Hillsong Church. Um, I went to Hillsong Church to listen to some preacher, and um, I was like, "Oh, I'll get a new Bible." I think I. I keep giving my Bibles away or whatever, you know what I mean, and then I just buy a new one. And I went to go pay at the Hillsong. There's like a gift shop. I went to pay for my Bible, this Bible, and she, and my card wouldn't work. And she goes, that's all right, on the house, and she let me have it. So she gave me the Bible for free. Thanks, Hillsong. It's really nice of them. Um <clears throat> <laughs> that's because you have a reference Bible, not because it's King James. Maybe. Maybe I'm just lucky. I think my King James Bible too, that was given to me um, by my last from City Point Church. Pastor Tim gave me a stack of Bibles um, to give to my youth kids and then I kept that, that one. Got it freaking next to me bed. Anyway, let's continue reading First uh, Timothy 12. The title, it says, The Lord's Grace to Paul. So that's, that's actually added on to this letter. <clears throat> um, anyway, verse 12. Um, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, <clears throat> who has given me strength, that he considers me trustworthy, appointing me to his service, even though I was once a blasphemer, and a persecutor and a violent man. See, there's hope for us all. Um, I was showing mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy say saying that deserves full acceptance uh, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners <clears throat> who I am the worst. Uh, but for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Jesus Christ might display his immense <clears throat> patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. <clears throat> now to the... King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, the honour and glory forever and ever. And amen. That's like pretty much sums. That's like a really powerful uh, verse, isn't it? So how could you like imagine someone who would be like in the, in the Bible, you know, it's been interpreted that many times you lose the meaning. You lose what it's saying. That's fucking bullshit. We've got 35,000 manuscripts <clears throat> of the New Testament, New and Old Testament, I think mainly the New Testament, and uh, in heaps of different languages. They, they When they translate them, it's like a 99.9% .9 uh, accuracy. <clears throat> so there's like nothing's lost. We know exactly that that statement, that's what being a Christian is. That's what being a Christian is. We know that. We know what the the first, uh, the apostles, we know what Jesus taught the apostles because we know what the apostles are teaching and believing. We know what the apostle Paul, <clears throat> he actually became a Christian after Jesus got crucified, but he was around the same time 
he was there. He if we read this continually, you'll run. There'll be like verses where you run into the. He runs into the um, other apostles, and they like are talking and stuff. So <clears throat> we know exactly what to believe when the Muslims or the Jews are like say whatever they want to say. They could say whatever they want to say, but we know what it says. Either you take it or leave it because we know. We know 100% this is what the earliest Christians believed. It's 100% we know for a fact. That's what he believes. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying and teaching. This is what the the apostolic church was found. It was founded on this. That's these simple principles. Um Maybe we should just read that again because I just read the whole thing through. So we could, like, read it again and we'll just break it down slowly. <clears throat> um, that's good, giving Bibles away. I can't walk past an op shop without buying up the Bibles. Yeah, that's always a good place to get them, hey? Um, the word plants seeds. God works on people's hearts. It's truly a living word. Amen. And I reckon, like, you could probably read this scripture yourself and you you know, what I, what I pull out of it and that, uh, you know, things that my mind activates and I go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's speaking to me right now because, you know, Joe Blow pissed me off or I pissed someone else off or, <clears throat> and it, or like a thought run through my mind, you know, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's reading that scripture like um, helps me to like reevaluate my mind, helps me reevaluate myself self and keep me on track and be like, oh, I know, I know the good culture. I know the um I know the tradition. I know the culture. I know what it says. Bang. And now I can I can get myself back on track. You know what I mean? That does that through reading the word and it like starts to starts to fix things up. Things start to get tuned in again. Praise Allah. There you go. The false God. Sorry, buddy. Not on this live. Um, anyway, we'll, re we'll reread it. First Timothy 12. Maybe we'll just break it down this time. Who's Al? Yeah. <clears throat> um, Alan Snackbar. Yeah. Praise Alan Snackbar. That's right. Um. Anyway, we'll break this down, 1 Timothy 1.12. We'll just break it down slowly this time. <clears throat> um, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, bang, <clears throat> who has strengthened me. Isn't that good? That's like a great way you should be thinking. That's This is like recorrecting our false thinking and our false. We're surrounded by like. People who don't read the world, so they just do, they drift off and they come up with all sorts of uh, weird ways of thinking. But obviously, the right way to thinking, it's like, yeah, I just want to thank Christ. He says, "Christ Jesus, our Lord." So Christ means Savior, right? <clears throat> Christ Jesus, our Lord. Bang! He's straight up honoring Jesus. He's put him in a place of honor. Um, <clears throat> I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me. How, isn't that good? We all need to be strengthened right now. I don't know how many of these are like fucking out of work or bloody work's been cut down and probably don't have a lot of cash. Probably like, oh, man, you could get worried. You get stressed out these days at the moment with the communist bad aids, fly, you know, getting around. People could be stressed out. People could be in Melbourne being like, I'm in isolation. Um, and you could be like, nah. All we got to do is be like, nah, I'm just going to honour Jesus. I'm going to be like, yo, <clears throat> he's the one who gives me strength. Hallelujah. He's the one who's going to give you strength, not the stupid weird vaccine they want to fucking give you. Um Brother Paul met Christ, yeah, he did when he in the road to Damascus. Um, he was overtaken on the road to Damascus and blinded by Christ. It's not a mystery. Yeah, it's true. It's absolutely true. Paul did meet uh, Christ. 
I would not be surprised if Paul seen Christ before his conversion, like when he was in Jerusalem uh, around the time of the crucifixion. Like Paul seems to be like he was the gate. This dude who's writing this, he was a hard-out Jewish religious um, Orthodox Jew who hated Christians because the Christians were like, the temple worship is over. It's finished. There's a new covenant. There's a new way to relate to God. Jesus is Jesus' death and resurrection. He's the sacrifice. He's risen again. He's a that's the eternal sacrifice. And he, he, you know the new the New Testament in this New Testament, this new covenant. They're like that temple worship where they used to take animal sacrifices and they would sacrifice, make a blood sacrifice for their sins, and they'd. You know, that was the way that that was the way that that was their covenant. That was the covenant Israel had with God. And the, you know, the Christians were like, yo, Jesus died and rose again, man. The old covenant's gone. The temple worship is over. Look, the law of Moses is over. There's a new way. And they start preaching the gospel. <clears throat> so as the, as the apostles are teaching that and Jesus rose again, the, the Jewish people who were like the gatekeepers of uh, the old covenant, the old way, the way Israel used to connect with God, you know, it was probably pretty honourable, it was pretty good. That's the way God had it set up for them until Jesus came and they were like, no, they wanted to hold on to that tradition. They wanted to hold on to their, their temple worship. They were threatened by the Christians. They were like, What? but undermining the tradition and the culture of Israel. And Paul hated it. Paul was a Pharisee. He worked for the temple to um, to capture the Christians and bring them before the courts. But anyway, Paul Paul converted. <clears throat> he became a Christian. One time we'll, we'll go through that eventually. We'll go through the original story and you'll be like, oh, we'll go do a prequel. We'll do a prequel to this. And we'll, I'll teach us about who he is. We'll read about it. You can read about it in the book of Acts anyway if you do want to fucking if you do want to know. Um, but yeah. So this is what he's saying. Yeah, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord for giving me strength that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to this service. And that's the service of preaching this message to us, to the Gentiles, that's to everyone outside of Israel to all the nations of the earth. <clears throat> I just love it how um, I feel like God, you know, we've got like, it's like globalism versus nationalism. I'm telling you what, God's, he's got a globalistic mission for every individual nation. That's the proper, that's the proper way to do it. Not like set up Babylon and have uh, the UN dictating to every nation and, you know, that's what it will become. That's what government is. It's a freaking standover government. You know, we want more taxes. We want more control. <clears throat> well, the Christian culture is go preach the gospel. Go bless the nations with the good news. Go bless them with the Holy Spirit. Empower them. And um, it's a global. It's a global mission. It's a global. Uh, you know, Christianity is global, but it's for the individual, each nation. And that's why you can sit there and be like, you know, these days they like, you can't be proud to be white. And that's bullshit. That's absolute lie from the fucking devil. God's called every nation, right? So when they start saying that shit to you, just be like, you're a fucking liar. Go back to the sulfur pit. Just tell them straight and just be like, no, nah, I'm proud of my heritage because uh, God's called my people to salvation. Every single nation has been called. So just reject that when they say that. <clears throat> I thought he only heard his voice. I was like a pillar of light or something in the road of Damascus. Maybe it was his voice. I guess like um, at that stage, Jesus um, had ascended to heaven and he sent the Holy Spirit. So that... That's probably him. That's how, he's, that's how he operated. 
But I'm sure I would only imagine that the Apostle Paul would have seen Jesus. Um, progressives, <laughs> our children of the lie. <clears throat> well, I guess, you know, we just read First Timothy um, 1 and it lists like all the sin. It, it lists like a fair few things and it clearly states what is immoral and what is a sin and um, what is sound doctrine. So you have to see that these progressives are like drifting off into uh, it's not right. It's clearly not right. It's not what the um, it's not a part of Christian culture or the Christian tradition. I call it the Christian race because we're um, when we're born again, when we're born of the spirit, if you're born again, aren't you then, if you're a Christian, you're like part of the Christian race. That's what I call it. And it stirs people up and they don't like it. So I'm just be like, that's what the Bible says. And they just flare up. They start frothing at the mouth. Um. Anyway, I keep reading. Even though, what's he reckon? Uh, consider me this trust. Oh, what? Yeah. The, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance. And I guess this is something we always need to like, you know, it's like these progressives are children of the lie. They are, but they're in ignorance. So we have to like, you know, there's people so far right wing that are in ignorance and there's people so far left that are in ignorance and there's atheists in ignorance. There's all of us are in ignorance. I was in ignorance um, before someone, you know, was fucking kind enough to be like, yo, Dusty. Someone just invited me to church and I was like, yeah, I'll go. My mates, right, my mates, um, there was three dudes. One dude was a Mexican. One was an Aussie. But Aussie. One was a Papua New Guinean. Three. They were like real good mates, and they used to go to the local youth group at the, the church. And uh, they were like, "Yeah, I'll come to the youth group." I'm like, "Yeah, I'll, I'd go anywhere with them." I was like, "Oh, I'm jumping in people's cars," and you know, like I think it was not long before that I jumped in a mate's car and. We joyrided his mum's car and then the next day he did the same thing, uh, joyrided another car and he crashed it and killed someone. So when someone invited me to church, I was like, you know what, if I'm willing to jump in a car <clears throat> with a mate and joyride a car, I'll fucking go. I'll go with you guys. You guys are like good, happy, normal, fun guys to hang out with you. I'll go with you. <clears throat> and thank goodness I went. And um, met a heap of youth leaders who were like young dudes, probably my age now. Who were, they were all like tradies too, and had like wives and freaking. We're like they had that shit sorted out. I'm like these dudes are good. This is like the life. I'm so grateful someone invited me. <clears throat> yeah, so he's saying I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance. Well, so did I. So have all of us. Did they want? Where am I? Yeah, hang on. I've already seen that one. They are embracing their father, the devil. They need to return to God, the father. Yeah, true that. Did they walk into a bar? Um, I don't know if that's for me or... Um, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Oh, yeah, so that's heaps of people out there. That was me too. Um, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. And I guess if you're like, I don't understand what this grace is. See, grace isn't like, you know how you're like, that's so graceful. And it's like they're like, like I don't know, like a... Yeah, some people think being graceful is like a, someone gliding on the fucking ice or something, like skating on the ice gracefully or something. Yeah, that's not what the Bible means by grace. Grace means unearned favour. 
unearned favor. So he's saying, because he's saying he didn't um, like the old way. Every religion on the earth, it's like you do, you got to pray to Allah five times a day. You got to do the hard gym, walk around Mecca seven times. You got to keep your karma right and you got to, you know, do your rituals. You got to, you got your animal sacrifices to do like the Jews did. So they had like that religious duty. And if you, if you sin too much and you didn't do your penance, you were out of balance. The scale was out. You were screwed. You weren't uh, in God's favor, were you? But Christians, we believe that Jesus died. He paid, he defeated death. He defeated the power of sin. It, they, the Bible says the power of sin is death, right? So Jesus defeated death. He now controls it. He's the judge. And he's, do you know how now he has the, he's done away with the religious system, the weight scale of you doing enough right, wrong. He's there and he goes, yo, I'm, make, I'm calling the shots now, boys. And he goes like, yo, when you, when you put your faith in him, you're like, yo, I believe there's a God. I think there's something more here. I think there's a creator. Someone built this fucking thing. I think there's a director behind the, you know, something there shooting the scenes. There's some uh, co-writer who made this thing, you know what I mean? There's some fucking co-writer who's built this matrix, this system, <clears throat> and you're like, oh, oh, that's that Jesus bloke, sweet ass. He, fuck, he controls the uh, mechanisms now. He's reestablished a new way to... Uh, be right with God. He got rid of the weight scale. He's like, no, nah, it's not good. It was probably not good for us. I believe it wasn't good for us or him. I think he's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm rigging the game. I'm taking control of the game. I'm entering into the system. He plugged himself into the matrix. He entered in like Neo and he's like, he's changed the rules of the game. And Jesus now controls the, uh, He's the one who calls the shots and he goes, yo. So grace means that Jesus is like, dude, you are a real piece of shit down there, Paul. You're a real asshole, up to no good. Uh, but you know what? You put your trust in me. I died for all of you, but you know what, buddy? The slate's wiped clean. I paid for all that garbage you did. And now he's like, breathes a little bit of Holy Spirit empowerment into this dude's life and this guy's like, you know what? He's out there. He knows. He's, he knows the truth. He knows that the uh, the new covenant that God's established. He knows that um, the game's been changed. He's like, yo, his eyes are open. He's like, dude, the old religious system is done away with. It's done and dusted. It's no longer viable. We might as well. The temple is... It's just the building now. The temple where they used to play their religious games, he's like, it's just a, it's nothing now. It's an empty um, system of, it's essentially like it is a system of control at that point because it's not actually, there probably was a time on earth where all, all religions were like in a way sincerely trying to connect with God. We're trying to get that weight scale sorted out. But Jesus is like, yo, dude, I've, the game has been changed. I'm giving you an inside scoop. <clears throat> um, but that's what Paul means when he says the grace of God. Grace means unmerited, undeserved favour. Paul couldn't, Paul changed his weight scale. Paul went and said, like, God, pretty much Paul was saying, like, at, there was a time where he didn't follow Jesus. He was going out persecuting Christians and he was trying to keep the old system alive. He was like, dude, I don't even, he was rejecting the new covenant. He was trying to keep the old system alive. God's like, dude, the game's being changed. I've changed the game, dude. And Paul was trying to literally kill Christians and be like, stuff these dudes, I want the old game. When his eyes open, it was impossible for him to get the balance. That system is gone. Done. Jesus is Jesus is like, and he's welded he's welded it to win. He's welded it in your favor. 
the weight scale is not going out of your favour any longer. It's impossible. It's impossible. <clears throat> he's like a carpenter, so he's just like propped it up. He's propped up the side. He's nailed down the other side and you're set in wind mode. So in the spirit realm, you're like, yo, you're set to win. That's what grace is. The game's rigged in your favour. Imagine how all the lefties feel about that. All the, like, the, even the right-wing extremists, the people worried about, oh, the JQ, oh, my God, the Jews are keeping me down. Whinge, whinge, whinge. It's like, fuck off, dude. The game's already set in your favour. You've won. You're a Christian. Have faith. Stop being a fucking coward. And the lefties are like, I need more money. Money's going to solve my problem. Let's steal from them, redistribute it, because money's going to make me feel happier. Is it? That's wrong. That's fucking idiotic. <clears throat> you should know that the game's already set. You're at peace with God. The game's set. The freaking weight scales are freaking welded to win mode. And uh, stop being a mental sook. Stop being a mental sook. Start getting tuned to re the real reality, <clears throat> which is you're laughing, mate. Walk through your life in peace and be like, yo, fuck your scomo. I don't need your injection, bro. I don't need the vaccine. <clears throat> I'm going to be laughing. It's all good. The game's set. The game's rigged. Um. Where are we going anyway? Um, verse 14. Uh, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. That's good. That's what I mean when you understand that. That's what it, pretty much I just explained that because it's just understanding and being aware of that and being like, oh. Um. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Kiwi, the Mexican, and the Aussie walk into a bar. That's right. There was actually, there was a Mexican and Aussie pup in Guinea, and I guess I was the Kiwi, truest blue Aussie. <laughs> um, I have love for progressives, as I love all people except Ben Shapiro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh uh, or in this case, steal a car. Yeah. Let's just, yeah. Yeah, that's back in context of the dudes who invited me to church. And it, that was the context I put it in. I was like, dude, if I can joyride a car with my mate and, uh, you know, be an idiot, be so dumb to do that with a mate, and then, uh, you know, that mate, did the same thing the night after killed someone and then it was like a week later some guys are like yo you want to come to church like good people i'm like yeah i'll go with you if i'm willing to be a, such a dumb idiot to jump in a fucking car and go joyride it of course i'm going with the mexican the puppy new guinea and the aussie bloke <clears throat> thank goodness for that um anyway where was i so here's verse 15 here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world <clears throat> to save sinners. Bang, that's good. That's some good news. That's when, like, you hear Christians that are like, yeah, oh, the good news. Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners. And see, this is, you know, when I said to you, I was like, the verse says the Lord's grace to Paul, right? And I said they added that. This letter is one continued continuous letter so when we just read all the verses about listing the sins and you have to be like there is no heading there you continue on and then you're like oh okay but god come to save them sins and that's why we use the law like in the proper context it says that uh at verse first timothy 1 8 it says we know that the law is good if one uses it Properly, we don't use it to judge over people. We use it to have wisdom and the law protects us so we don't go through 
heartache and pain and the disaster and the our lives and our nations don't degenerate. That's what the law's there for. It's not there to look down on people and judge them because what's Paul's judgment? He's like, here's a trustworthy saying, verse 15. <clears throat> um, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves all, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> deserves full acceptance, deserves a full acceptance. Okay, okay, this is what he says. This is what he says. Christ came into the world to save sinners. That's it. We're all fucking sinners. We're all we're all there. We're all there. We all need his help. My phone's gonna die. Um, My phone's gonna fucking die. I. Um, it's on red. Maybe I'll do one last set. Um, I'll just finish reading this chapter again. Um, yeah, here's a here's a trustworthy saying that. That deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. That's what Paul reckons. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience and his example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Hallelujah. Let's believe in Jesus, man, and receive eternal life. Let's not worry about all this garbage let's get our eternity sorted out that's the best insurance you can get better than a oh, i need my vaccine <clears throat> i need my vaccine stuff your vaccine get your bloody get your um immortality sorted out you know what i mean get your eternal life sorted out verse 17 now to the king eternal immortal invisible the only god be honor and glory Forever and ever, amen. Hallelujah. That sounds so powerful. What a powerful culture and tradition we have. Being Christian, isn't it? Just we read like, what do we read? We read chapter 1 down to verse 17. Bang. That's it. Too easy, mate. Um, I'll just do my last set before my phone dies. You fucking beauty. Um, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, all right, we'll quickly pray and then that will do it. Um, I like to pray. I was reading all these verses about praying on your knee, like taking the knee and praying. And I was like, oh, I didn't realise. Like I never really prayed on, on a knee. And seeing as all these people are kneeling to the flag and being demonic losers, I'm, gonna st I'm praying on my knee from now on. So do that. Why not? <clears throat> uh, Heavenly Father, I'll be thanks for this live. Thanks for your delicious cold beer too. It was really good. Thanks for the um, bench press and for everyone who watched. Hopefully they lift and pray and read that word and enjoy today. Hopefully it helped them not to be a pathetic loser like heaps of people. Um, hope the word blessed them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Cheers, I. <laughs> yeah. The love of God will fix any beta. God bless you. Catch his bloody thirsty Thursday. Catch his tomorrow. Cheers, eh?